Welcome to Endless Hardware, I'm David. Today we're going to be talking about a trick on a Cisco switch. Some people buy what they call SFP modules to expand a Cisco switch. Sometimes it's almost a necessary requirement. However, a lot of times we're bargain shopping, looking for different things, and they sell third party. These are not Cisco SFP modules. And what an SFP module is, is a small form factor pluggable module that can either be fiber, ethernet, something like that, that can go into our gigabit ether, ethernet uh, interfaces inside of our switch. However, third party SFP modules are not supported. We're gonna talk about why and how to use them. Stay tuned. you even have a non Cisco SFP module? Well, a lot of people that use Cisco switch in their home labs, uh, home environment, maybe a small office, the Cisco SFP modules are quite pricey. And a lot of times people search for bargains on Amazon, eBay, things of that nature. A lot of these uh, SFP modules are not supported. And if you plug it into your Cisco switch, it'll automatically disable that SFP module. Now, there is a workaround, which is what we're going to get to in the next segment of the video. However, as a, as a warning that's even in the software, this is not supported by Cisco, and if you do use these modules into a Cisco switch, you will not be able to get support for it. So I've put that out there. Uh, in case that's important to you, this video may not be for you. However, in the case that you are using this in an environment that you're you're not worried about it in a corporate structure or something like that, and you're not worried about calling Cisco. You just want to play with it. You want to learn it. You want to learn the switch. This is the video for you. So what we're going to cover today is we're going to cover how to basically connect to your switch. There's many people who will put different instructions online, but some of the average beginners don't even know how to connect to the switch. So that's what we're going to talk about today is a basic how to get to the switch and a basic how can we put these commands and what they do. So one of the things you're going to need in order to proceed with any of this is what they call a console cable. This one happens to be a, a USB to RJ45 console cable that will plug directly into the back of the switch. From there, that will allow us to use an application called PuTTY to be able to access the switch and get to the data we want. So what I have here in front of me is a Cisco Catalyst 3560G switch. This one, this model happens to have four of the SFP ports on the front. We've got our eight regular Ethernet ports. On the back here, we've got the power cable and we've got our console cable. That's where we'd be connecting to. So from there, what we're going to show is this brief introduction of how to get to those points. What does it do? What happens if we plug it in? And how easy is this? It's easy. Stay tuned. In this case, being that this device is USB, all we need to know is what COM port that it's on. So I'll go ahead and start PuTTY. If you're familiar with what COM port you're on, one way to easily check that is uh, go look at the uh, device manager. And then we can go look at ports. And now I can see right here, USB serial port, COM port 10. So I know that in my case, COM port 10 is what I'm looking for. So what we want to see is I want to go to serial, 9600 is fine, and 10. This switch is defaulted, by the way, but what we're looking for is to get into it this way. So as I open it up, we'll get this window here. If I go ahead and hit enter, now we've got switch. What I'm doing here with this config, what this whole video is about, is if you take a non-Cisco SFP module and plug it into a switch, the port, well, it's not supported and the port will actually disable. And from that point, it's not usable and it's just almost as it's dead. So this is not recommended in a working environment, but in a home environment, somewhere a lab set up, you're testing. These SFP modules can be had on eBay and Amazon for next to nothing compared to the regular Cisco modules. However, if I place this module in, which I'm doing so now, we'll get an error on the screen, um, basically disabling it, and you have no working module at that point. 
So right here, we've got SFP not supported and GI-28 not supported. Here's the other part, air disable. Uh, GBIC invalid, error detected, putting in air disabled state. And from now on, that one's not going to work until we make further changes. So one of the easy ways that's a shortcut command in some of the newer operating systems, I've been told this was taken out. I have not tested that. However, in a lot of the older switches and a lot of even current switches, one way we can do we can get around this is if we type enable, got switch, configure, config terminal. Okay, now we're here. So to get to this point, I'm in my switch. I typed enable, enter, I put config, terminal. Now, what I want to do is I just want to type a simple command. Service. Unsupported. Transceiver. Okay, now it gives you a nice little warning. Warning, when Cisco determines that the fault or defect can be traced to the use of third-party transceivers installed by a customer or reseller, then at Cisco's discretion, Cisco may withhold support under warranty or a Cisco support program. So, in other words, this warning is very clear to you, so you plainly know, hey, don't use this in a lab environment because this for somehow could be traced that you're causing errors or different things. Uh, an SFP module has an EEPROM chip that basically tells it what it is, what the CRC is, everything, all the, the common features where the switch would be detected. So we've got one other part that needs to go with this. If not, it doesn't work. So we need to put no, disable, Valid. Now, when we hit this, we don't get anything there. That's done. So now, if we reboot the switch, we don't get the same error. And if I plug in another module, I have another one in my hand I'm going to plug in. And let's just go down here. Let's just plug in another one and see what do we get. All right, tells me it's not supported, but I didn't get the message up top for the invalid the uh, invalid error and disable state. So at this point, yes, you will get that notice. You will get that warning when you boot up the switch if you're looking at the command line. However, in your lab, your setting, it will work just fine. So it's just something to test, uh, give you an idea, a workaround. Sometimes you may be out in the field, you need to do something to get on your feet. You may be in a position to where at home, you just don't want to spend a bunch of money for your home lab. This is an easy workaround to allow you to, uh, to try it there. So let's save the configuration. Building config. Proceed with reload. Yes. And we're going through the reload. And I want to show you, it will come up, I believe, and give us the warning message, as it says. However, that's okay because in our environment or you're at home or whatever you're doing in your home office, you'll know that you're okay with that. And this is something that you won't see unless you were logged in here physically looking at this anyway inside of the switch. But I just want you to be aware it's not a supported solution. However, it is one that does work. And I personally run this on a lot of fiber setups and home, home labs and home environments, things of that nature. So it's definitely worth trying out if you want to get a workaround or if you've got some old SFP modules that are just not supported and you had extra. There's no need throwing them away or buying big money to buy something else if you want to just play with it in your own environment. So once this thing loads, when you're in a switch, sometimes they take a good while to re reboot, but not terribly long.
But logging into a Cisco switch, as long as you've got the, the proper cable, it's not that difficult to do. So remember, all I did was take the, the USB to RJ45 console cable, it's plugged directly into the back of the switch. I found out what COM port my PC is on. I downloaded the application PuTTY. I went in to tell it what port I'm at. And here we should see the error come up, the, not the error, the uh, warning come up soon. Let's see what happens. The switch is still in its booting process. There's a lot goes on, on when a switch boots up. Sometimes they seem like they hang and take forever, but if you ever sit in front of one of these, it takes a little while for a Cisco switch to boot. It's almost like saying, oh, is something wrong? But no, it's still loading. But it'll give us an idea of exactly what you should expect to see when you're logged in here as it's doing all its tests. All right, now, now we see our warning there at the bottom. Warning, Cisco determines that a fault or defective can be traced the use of third-party transceivers, but at least lets us know down at the bottom, right here at the bottom of the screen, or we're looking here, it shows me I have two SFP modules. Yes, they're not supported. However, they're not in the disabled state. So that's what's important for us to know. And I'll go ahead and put the uh, links and information of how these commands exactly work in kind of a step-by-step. -step. And I've, I've had several people call me out in the field asking these questions, different things. So this will give you some of the brief overview uh, shortly how to get to it. And uh, thank you for checking it out. Please give me a like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell notification when I upload something new. I'm going to continue working on things here, and uh, thank you for supporting and visiting the channel.